All right, today we're going to cover the fog basics in Unreal Engine. I have this very simple room, cube, etc. And if you go into your selection mode, the place actors panel, or the quickly add to project menu, doesn't matter. Under visual effects, you will find the exponential height fog. Now, before I add it, I want to show you one thing. If you fly outside, I have a basic lighting setup. And if I go into my window environment light mixer, so reposition our camera. We have this window. The environment light mixer is going to look for any lights inside our outliner inside this project of this level. And it will be like, what are we missing? We obviously have the directional light and I can control it here, but we're not, we don't have the height fog. So you could either add the, the exponential height fog with this menu here because it's registering that it doesn't have this fog in the scene, or you can go to your quickly add visual effects and exponential height fog. Okay, now we have some fog. The outside, let's go ahead and close that window, is uh, looking more like a, an empty space. We don't have a landscape, obviously, but we have our exponential height fog. Now, one thing that's not very clear with the exponential, the exponential height fog is that if you go to your fog density, if I crank this up, it looks foggier outside if I go ahead and change this value, uh, but it, it's capped out at 0 0.05. It's not clear because you can set this to like 10 and now it's super foggy. Okay, awesome, sweet. Uh, but let's just keep this to 0.5 for now. Now, another thing that's worth considering is that a lot of people, they want to get those nice light shafts that you typically see with Unreal renders. So what you have to do is you have to scroll down into your volumetric fog button right here. If you turn this on, it's gonna add volumetric fog and it, it's, it did something, but I don't know what. I can hold control L and this will change the rotation of my directional light in my scene, but it's not doing a whole lot. I could very well try and go into my exponential height fog after I reposition my light so we're getting into the window and I can go ahead and crank this value to like two and we're getting some light shaft here but it's still not giving me exactly what I want and the reason why is because this is a this property right here the fog density is a global value as in it's affecting all of the fog in our scene versus if I set this to like 0.5 uh, we're still getting our light shaft here and actually this looks pretty good but if I go into my directional light here I can see this volumetric scattering intensity this is basically saying how much does our sunlight contribute to our fog volume here so I can really increase the the volumetric scattering intensity of just the sunlight without affecting my fog globally so let's set this to like 20 and now it's now it's super volumetric and the more you crank it the more you'll see some weird artifacts there so this is a a push and pull situation basically what i recommend here is setting this to a, like a more reasonable value so you don't get those weird jaggedy artifacts and uh, adjusting your uh, intensity of your light to really give you the the effect that you need and a lot of the time subtlety is key uh, I'm curious can you yes you can also change the color of the fog with the color of your light uh, but if you go into your exponential height fog and uh, go into your albedo of the volumetric fog so let me just rewind that really quick because I was really fast exponential height fog selected under the details panel uh, if we scroll down we have our albedo, which is gonna be the color of the fog, and we can go ahead and also change this here, and it's gonna give us a, a different look. We can adjust a lot of different properties under our exponential height fog. We're not gonna cover every single one because there's a lot here, but the, generally speaking, this is gonna be the, the number one way to help add those light shafts to your scene, and the number one thing to contribute to those light shafts will be to add light blockers. So the last thing I'll do is I will go into my selection mode modeling and then let's go ahead and add a cylinder and just drop it right there and then I will set the uh, radius to much thinner and then I will increase the height and then I will just make it even thinner let's say five cool and then I can just duplicate this a bunch of times and then maybe just increase the uh, x scale and we can see here if you look very subtly right there it the fog is rendering differently based on the placement of these 
uh, I guess, window shades, etc. And then I can go back into my directional light and then increase the volumetric scattering intensity to like 10. And now we have this like stripey effect. So adding light blockers will help with uh, creating that fog effect that you might want for your scene. Last thing I will say is uh, depending on how your shot is being rendered, uh, having uh, geometry will generally be a better solution to your uh, fog options. And we can see here that I added a rectangle here, but the problem with this rectangle is if I go to the other side, it's invisible because it's a single sided material versus if I go ahead and uh, delete that rectangle and go into my box at a box and then I just increase the width or in the, not the width, the depth and the height. Now we lose all of our fog entirely. So having geometry with thickness will also fix your fog and affect your fog. Okay, quick tutorial done. I hope this tutorial was helpful on how to add fogs to your stuff. If it was, let me know in the comment section down below. Questions, comments, concerns, whatever else, comment section is down there for that as well. And I will leave you with the final tip. As always, one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Bye.